write down the principle of conservation of mechanical energy in words that is 4.1 so usually if in 4.1 i'm the I'm defining the principle of conservation of mechanical energy. I'm assuming that in 4.2, I'm going to have to use that principle. Usually, it is the principle of conservation of linear momentum. And then we would use it in the equation that follows, right? But here we have the conservation of mechanical energy. So I'm expecting that that's what we're going to use in 4.2. But let's go ahead and see if that is actually the case. So we have two trolleys A and B of masses 1.5 kgs and 2 kgs and then the stationary and then between the two of them there's a compressed spring right uh, the trolleys are released and the spring takes t seconds to return it to its natural length right the spring then falls to the ground trolley a moves to the left while trolley b moves to the right we can clearly see here after the spring is uh, released trolley a then moves to the left while trolley b moves to the right and then trolley b goes up a friction less inclined plane rising to a maximum height of 1.5 meters as shown in the diagram below so 4.2 calculate the speed of trolley b at the bottom of the inclined plane at the bottom of the inclined plane okay so what let's see what we can do here so obviously the first thing that we're going to try out is the conservation of mechanical energy if it doesn't work out then we can try other things but the most organic step should be the conservation of linear momentum of mechanical energy not linear momentum so let's take a look at um the yeah the cut b is it is it a cut no it's a trolley so let's take a look at b at the bottom of the incline and then also take a look at it at the top of the incline so at the top uh, at the bottom of the incline that is where we are interested in its velocity right let me just say v and in order to vf so we are interested in this velocity at the bottom of the incline uh but what we what else do we have we just have the mass that's all we have right the mass is two kgs and then at the top of the incline <clears throat> so the question says that it reaches does it reach a maximum height that's what i want to see because if it reaches a maximum height i know that the velocity is zero there so it it rises to a maximum vertical height so okay v is equals to zero at the top because that is the maximum height the mass is still the same but we have the height which is 1.5 meters here we can say that the height is equals to zero so this information looks like it is enough for us to use the conservation of linear momentum we know that the mechanical energy the total uh, mechanical energy at the bottom should be equals to the total mechanical energy at the top this is because our track does not have any friction right it is frictionless so we can use the conservation of mechanical energy so at the bottom we're going to have ep plus ek right potential energy plus kinetic energy at the top we're also going to have ep plus ek so what is the potential energy at the bottom we know that the potential energy is mgh right so the mass is 2 gravitational acceleration is 10.8 the height is 0 what about the kinetic energy half mass is 2 v squared that's what we're interested in right and then at the top in kinetic energy is 2 9.8 the height is 1.5 but the kinetic energy at the top is actually equals to zero because we know that at the maximum height the velocity is zero so we have zero squared there so this gives us zero two divided by two is one so we have v squared being equals to this gives us zero so let me just put that in my calculator 2 multiplied by 9.8 multiplied by 1.5 multiplied by 9.8 multiplied by 1.5 that is 29.4 so we have 29.4 so v is equals to 5.42 meters per second the question says speed so we don't have to give any direction we can just leave it like that okay and then 4.3 4.3.1 for the t seconds that the spring takes to return to its natural length calculate the change in momentum of trolley b change in momentum of trolley b so change in momentum delta p which is m multiplied by vf minus vi we can use this to find the change in momentum right so let's see before the spring is released the initial velocity of both trolleys a and b is zero right and then after the spring is released and then it is at its full length b is climbing up the incline with a velocity of 5.4 
two meters per second uh, to the minus one, right? Up the incline to the right. Okay, so we are looking for the change in momentum. Well, momentum is a vector, so we need to decide on a direction. Let's take direction to the right, it's positive, right? So we're gonna have delta P being equal to the mass two. VF is 5.42, VF is 5.42, right? Minus VI, VI is zero, right? VF is not zero, VF is zero there at the top. Here we have 5.42 and here we have zero <laughs> once more, right? So don't confuse, uh, don't take, well, 5.42, it's our VF when the spring is lengthening and it is our VI when we are going up the incline, right? So most people, they sort of confuse the two, right? So two multiplied by 5.42, this is equals to 10.8. Four, so kg meters per second to the right, to the right. This is the change in momentum of trolley B. While trolley A, write down the change in momentum of trolley A, that is 4.3.2, right? So it is gonna be the same, it is going to be the same, uh, but in the opposite direction, right? It's easy to prove because we know that F net is equal to delta P over delta T, right? So this, uh, a and B will experience the same force. We cancel time and time. We end up with delta P being equal to delta P, but in the opposite direction because of Newton's third law. So the change in momentum of ball uh, ball A or trolley A, not ball A, will be 10.84 kg meters per second. Um, where? To the left. To the left. To the left. All right. Uh, maybe what we can talk about is the SI unit here. The question is saying change in momentum. It is not saying impulse. So should the SI unit be kg meters per second or should it be newtons multiplied by second? Which one between the two? Kg meters per second or newtons multiplied by second? Right. I think the impulse, right, will be kg meters per second but the change in momentum will actually be newtons multiplied by second. So let me know in the comments, which SIN did you use? Did you use kg meters per second? Or did you use newtons multiplied by second? I think that is another thing that we need to figure out here. So I'm interested in your answer for this question. Is it in kg meters per second? Or is it, it newtons multiplied by second? And why are you saying so? Right. Um, again, I think this is one of the things that uh, probably there's going to be a lot of disagreement on. Do we use both? Do we have the freedom of choice? Are we supposed to use one? Let me know in the comments. All right. And then 4.4, calculate the speed of trolley A after T seconds. So now we can use, uh, because we know here we have 0, 0, here we have 5.42, and here we have an unknown speed. So that is the speed that uh, we are looking for. We can obviously use the conservation of linear momentum. So the conservation before should be close to the co well the totally the total momentum before right should be close to the total momentum after right. So before we have one point five plus two because well we can even separate them if you you want that we have one point five multiplied by zero plus two multiplied by zero right and after we have one point five multiplied by v plus 2 multiplied by 5.42. Okay, so 0 is equal to 1.5 V. And then 5.42 multiplied by 1 point, multiplied by 2, not 1 point something. So 0 is equal to 1 point, ugh, I've already written it there. So here I'm supposed to have plus 10.84. Um, v is equal to... 10.84 divided by minus 1.5. This is equal to minus 7.23 meters per second. So we are looking for the speed. So let me just say 7.23 meters per second and not worry about the direction. There we go.